Hi, I'm Veli from Greenwood Training. Today we'll be talking about framing and spreadsheets. So a lot of you designers and installers, you're designing the framing, how much framing to use for a particular project. A lot of cases using a calculator or a mobile phones calculator. But on this presentation, we're gonna be talking about using a spreadsheet. I'm using Excel, but you can use Google Sheets. You can use the Mac equivalent or any open source uh, spreadsheet. So let's get stuck into it. So the first thing I've done here, as you can see, is I've created two tables. The first table is called Solar Panel Framing Inputs, and the second table is called Solar Panel Framing Outputs. Now, because I'm such a slow typer, I've decided to take some shortcuts and uh, created a macro to populate the uh, various cells. Now, let's start here. So we click here, and on the first, two cells we're going to put in the panel brand and in this case I've used Acme so you can put in whatever brand you use or um, your installation team uses now the second field will be the model the panel model and in this case it's called fusion which is interesting um, if we're talking about the Sun solar panels it's a bit of a dad joke there the next field is panel length in millimetres, and this is the length of panel, in this case, 2,000 millimetres. The next is the width of the panel in millimetres again, 1,000. The next will be the number of panels. So this is a number of panels in a string or where there has to be a break in the actual framing. These are all inputs that you, the designer or the installer, put in. Next, is this one string, yes or no? I put a yes. Next, is the row separate? Yes, I put a yes. Portrait or landscape, in this situation I put a P, so the panels will be in a portrait configuration. Next, the mid space clamp in millimetres, I put 25. N clamp space in millimetres, 30. Now the buffer amount is the allowance for errors and a little bit of leeway. Nothing worse than cutting the rail, putting on the last panel, suddenly there's not enough room for that last um, end clamp, um, no comment. So you put the buffer amount you want in there. There's no restrictions. Length of rail used, so this obviously is the manufacturer's uh, rail lengths, whether it's 35, 100 millimetres, 4,000 millimetres, uh, 6,000 millimetres, whatever the frame, uh, the rail length is. <clears throat> Top rail additional length for the DC. So a lot of installers actually make the top rail a little bit longer to take into consideration the DC isolator and the shroud. So that's up to you what you want to put it in. So they're all the inputs, okay. Now we get to the solar, panel frame outputs and I've done the same thing because I'm such a slow typer. Top rail length in millimetres and there we go. There's the calculation based on this information and we'll go through how we derive that. Bottom rail length you can see that there's a 300 mil difference so if I say put in 200 mil in the top rail additional length for DC you can see it change. Now we'll just change it back to 300. Number of mid clamps. So effectively it's taking this information from the inputs, putting into a calculation and spitting out the results. Number of end clamps, same thing, four in this case. Framing lengths, top rail, so that's complete lengths used, five. Bottom lengths, five as well. Number of DC isolators, in this case one. And finally, the number of joiners. Now, how do we derive? How, what is the formula now? So we'll have a look. So I'll click here on this particular cell. And you can see the calculation, it looks pretty long, but effectively what it is, is I've used a conditional, I've 
I've used an if statement. So I've said if C10 is P, then all of this happens up until the comma, and if it's anything but P in C10, then this will happen. Now, a good thing, if you want to just work out where for how a formula is derived, or if you've made mistakes in this formula, is go to formula. Now I'm using Excel for Mac, so your ribbon may be different, but go to formula and try to find where it says trace precedence. And I'll click on that. And you can see straight away that it's referencing the length of the panel, the width, the, num the number of the panels, portrait or landscape, the mid clamp space, etc., etc. Now, the reason it references both the length and the width is because if I had stuck in L here, then it would be referencing the actual length of the panel because that would be the landscape configuration. Now, the same thing applies to the bottom rail length. Now, I'll trace the precedence. And you can see this time, it does not reference the top rail additional length to DC because, well, we're dealing with the bottom rail. Now, number of mid clamps, this is a pretty simple calculation that most of you would understand who, who have done any, any design or have done any installation. So effectively I've gone, well, the number of panels, well, the, the mid clamps are the gaps between so there's going to be 18 of those, so C7 minus 1, and then obviously divide, uh, multiply, sorry, multiply by 2 because we've got two rails and there's two mid clamps per space. The number of end clamps, I've, uh, it is referencing C9, is the row separate? And we've said yes, so automatically it sticks in 4. Now we know there's only going to be four end clamps because of its 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 one its one uh, um, unbroken row. Framing length top rail. Now you can see here we again are referencing both a formula here or the output of the formula in the top rail length and also the length of rail used. And what we've done is taken G3 which is the top rail length, and we've divided that by C14, which is the length of rail used, and we've rounded that up. So you're gonna end up with a little bit left over. And of course, we have to deal in complete lengths. Now, it's the same principle again for the framing lengths for the bottom rail, as you can see. Instead of going from G3 being the reference, it's G4. So that makes a lot of sense. Number of DC isolators is related to the answer in C8. And we've said a yes, so automatically that says one. If it says anything apart from Y, which means yes, it's gonna give it a zero. Now, I'm very aware, obviously, that you can parallel multiple strings. Now this is a really basic framing um, spreadsheet, so we are going to be looking at more complicated ones in, in future presentations. Now the number of joiners, again, let's have a look at the precedence. We can see it is the framing lengths of the top rail and the framing lengths of the bottom rail. So G7 and G8 and you're minusing one. It's sort of like the panels in the mid clamps because remember you're talking about spaces between and that you get that figure there. Now I've done something here too and this is called, you can see concatenation, I hate saying that, but effectively I can put in, let's say I change 19 panels to 300 panels, woohoo. You can see 300 panels in the series. And I've just did a bit of a drawing of 19 panels in series, so we'll take that back to 19. Now we'll be covering, as I said, in a future presentation, a more complicated um, 
uh, spreadsheet that does multiple rows and really does spit out a lot, lot more uh, information. Uh, but this is a bit of a start. Now, if you want to see, if you want to get this spreadsheet um, because you're having trouble putting it together yourself or because you just want to download it, uh, hit the subscribe button and we'll send one out to you. And that, that's not an issue for us at all. We're here to we're here to help, of course. That's why we're doing this training. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, or any way to improve my typing skills, um, drop us a line and um, look forward to seeing you in future presentations. And hit the subscribe button if you see fit. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.